let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The key of eternal life. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Second lesson, first John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Golden text and Mark chapter 8 verse 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. The Lord builds and watches. Quote, brethren, the above texts form the theme of our gospel. Many people maintain that God helps those who help themselves. How does God help a man? And how does a man help himself? This gospel is an eye drop that clears the eyes especially of those people that indulge in sorcery, occultism, necromancy, greed for money and materialism and other life-saving activities of supposedly protective charms for themselves and their families. This goes to prove that a man is empty and void and without any wisdom our life. Surrender yourself unto your owner, for no man owns himself. God is the creator and owner of everything. It is said that except the Lord builds a house and watches over a city, the laborers, he labors in vain who attempts to build and watch. The yield of man's efforts is futility not plus not this gospel therefore is that of joy for you for me and for the entire world this is to show that no man is capable of helping himself and there is no person who can protect you there is nobody or thing that is capable of saving man except God alone. This explains why I beseech you to learn your lesson from the happenings and goings on in this kingdom. Discard the teachings of Moses, of Abraham, of Adam and Lazarus and so on for those ones are fake. The teachings and lessons you have heard and seen currently in this kingdom is what you should live by. There is nothing you do know that is new. You are merely repeating the activities and behaviors that had been exhibited by Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Noah who constructed the ark where he securely kept his household. The big question is, did any of those things afford them salvation? People have invented and sourced for various forms of security measures to protect themselves and families from harm by procuring guns and other weapons to enable them effectively defend themselves when attacked. Has that been of any good to man? Others consult oracles, indulge in sorcery and diabolism as means of protection. People are taken inside water to the cemetery 
in the forest and all kinds of places where they where they do unprintable things for the sake of protection. The question is ever since men have indulged in these activities have they obtained salvation? As I have told you from 1938, I have had no sort of myself, no wisdom, and I have done nothing by myself. It is not as if that was the year I begun to surrender myself and lead such life, but that was the year I chose to disclose to you. I never had any wisdom of my own. All I knew was that man on his own accord can do nothing. It is God who is capable of doing everything as the creator and owner of all things. Surrender yourself and your all soul wholly to him. I am a living witness. Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear that he has yet many things to say, but that he cannot bear them. He continued, Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That was in John chapter 16, verses 12 to 13. I have carefully examined human life, from Adam till death, take the case of Adam. When he heard that enemy soldiers had captured the city and killed his half brother, Lot, he was not pleased. Abram marched. Abram marched along with four hundred soldiers and destroyed the enemies and their territory and looted it. The question is, after engaging in such atrocities, how did they feel? Were their lots better? Why not surrender yourself? Nothing that is created, whether it is man, tree, or whatever, can protect you. God alone protects and saves. I do not use dead tortoise in my sorcery, but I live but a live one. I do not talk about Moses, Jesus, Abraham, etc., but myself. What I have seen, what is going on, my activities, and what is expected of you to do, it is by so doing that you will obtain salvation. I am a living witness to this gospel. Anyone who listens to and hearkens to this gospel stands saved. We examine the first lesson. First lesson, John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Brethren, have you heard that? He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If it is that all who love their lives shall lose it, and those who hate it shall keep it, which is better to do, which is reasonable to do, and who does a better service between the two? You love and seek after your life. You crave to live, a, to live in a beautiful house that is well furnished and secured. And imbibe the notion that as God helps you, you have to help yourself. That is to say that heaven helps those who help themselves. You do these things, yet you still perish. Whereas, here is a person 
who cares about and runs after nothing yet obtains eternal life? The question is, which is the safe side or course of action to take? We have seen and known the one who gave his life for the sake of friends and is today living eternally. He has suffered no headache or stomachache ever since because of his mindlessness. But those who have been careful and cautious about their life, where are they today? Christ alone forsook his life, yet lived eternally. Christ did not die. He rose above death and he, and that was why he was not found in the grave when the people visited there. When the people went to look for Christ in the grave, they were rather queried by the angels on guard as to why they were seeking the living among the dead. The angel told the people that he had risen and had departed. What do you think about such a person and his life? Where as those who sought to protect themselves by indulging in sorcery, possession of arms and indulges in diabolism have since been forgotten? Such is the expression of man's foolishness and emptiness. From now onwards, we should endeavor to be wise and to know ourselves. We examine the second lesson. Second lesson, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Spiritual chorus. Eternal life belongs. Eternal life belongs to those who have faith in the Lord. Brethren, we have known and enjoyed the love God has for us. If the Lord did give his life as a ransom for many, it behoves us also to do the same to our brethren. By giving his life, Christ invariably obtained and secured it. This explains why no obituary has ever been announced about Christ, nor has it ever been announced of his indisposition or inactivity. Even though you say that he was nailed to the cross and is up in the sky, is that what the scriptures say? Discard your life and you will obtain it. When the federal troops entered into Calabar, on the 18th of October 1967, the whole city desert was deserted. Here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, it was the Bible class day, which was Wednesday. The following day, the 19th of October 1967, was Thursday, a day of general fasting and prayer. The venue was at 26 M. Bokpa Road, Calabar. The place was filled to capacity with people, members and non-members alike, who assembled for their dear life. No other church organization or institution was open in Calabar. People who speak ill of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star do not mean what they say. They know that the only place for their salvation is here. The only place of hope for the inhabitants of the entire world is here and nowhere else. The event of Thursday, 19th October 1967 proves right my statement. What eluded the multitude of people and you too here is your bid for self-help and individual protection. Make no attempt to protect yourself but surrender wholly to God. The fate of Christ, brethren. When our Lord Jesus Christ was arrested and arraigned before Pilate, his adversaries wanted him killed. They had no cogent reason to give to Pilate why they wanted him killed. 
All their aim was just to crucify Christ. No just cause was given to further strengthen their plan to crucify the Lord. They accepted his blood to be upon them and upon their children and their grandchildren yet unborn. It is only out of the fullness of the heart that the mouth speaks. We mention the name of our Lord Jesus Christ so freely and without intimidation. However, even in Jerusalem, in Israel, it is not so. Let us give our lives for the sake of brotherly love, as is our Lord Jesus Christ. If we surrender and give our life, we shall obtain eternal life. Our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us the key of life. I do not think any of us would be afraid of death from henceforth. If you discount your life and even chase death, it will run away from you. This is why I warn you not to emulate Abraham or Peter and the rest of the prophets, for they had their swords and other weapons always with them. Otherwise, it would not have been easy for Peter to spontaneously sever the ear of the priest's servant when the latter dared the Lord. Resemble no man, not even the patriarch, but me. I have brought to you the exemplary life to emulate. It is the truth that is in this kingdom that I have brought to the whole world. All who seek after their life shall lose it, but those who attempt not to save their life shall have it. Emulate my footsteps. Therefore, brethren, have you ever seen a person who has no knife, no protective weapon? Also, have you seen a person who neither rub something on his body, nor inject charms into his body, nor initiate into any cult? Many members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star die in the hospital. Members like Brothers E. Were you and Omar James have the kind of faith I am talking about that they were so sick but refused to go to hospital or take medication despite pressures from their family and friends to the contrary. Brother Umo wondered how he as a journalist of no mean repute who had written a lot about Brother of the Cross and Star and its doctrine will go con will go contrary to them. Members whose faith is founded in the truth do not quaver. I warned you all against the indulgence in medication as far back as 1960 at 26 and Buck Parode. The warning was issued from the highest heaven. I warned also that you should not even ask somebody to pray for you. Brethren, surrender yourself to the Father completely and He will care for you. It is not the medication that you take, nor the prayer offered to you, nor the food that you eat, or the things you rub or inject into your body that helps you. It is the Father that works in you. And when he knows you are due for services, he sends you to the workshop. A local adage says that it is the person who leads the way into the stream that sees clearly. I am the one who leads you unto the whole truth. And anyone who refuses the truth and perishes, his blood shall be upon him. Worry not yourself for self-protection and self-help by whatever means, 
God alone is our Savior, abiding peace with all men. We examine the golden text. Golden text, St. Mark chapter 8, verse 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. Brethren, the text has put to shame those who have been striving to help themselves. There being such developments, how many will be saved? Anyone who seeks not to save his life will have it. A spiritual quarrel. My life is in God's hands. My life is in God's hands. Of what importance it is. Life, my life is in God's hands. Brethren, whosoever threatens you and whatsoever threat that is posed to you, just laugh over it, knowing that the Father is in control. The problem the entire world has is faithlessness and unbelief, for it is said that anything that is not founded on belief is evil. Even if this great hall is embarked to be burned down, even if this great hall is earmarked to be burnt down and machinery put in place for its achievement, the faithful will not be moved. They will remain in the hall and will not be burnt. But those who shall run out for their dear life will meet their doom on their way out. Such faith it was that saved Shadrach and his two friends, and also Daniel, also who, because they believed in God, they had faith in him. The soldiers who cast Shadrach into the lake of fire were themselves burnt to death, and so too were the people who threw Daniel into the lion's den, devoured while the latter remained on earth. I am preaching this gospel from the highest heaven for all the inhabitants of the earth and the world at large to hear, so that all who seek to save their lives shall lose it, while those who hate their lives shall have it saved. Faith is the weapon, brethren. Faith is our weapon in this kingdom. Abraham had faith in God and was saved. Spiritual chorus. Whose work are you doing? I am doing the work of the Lord. Brother, whose work are you doing? I am doing the work of the Lord. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, if you do not have faith in him, you would not see the beautiful city of heaven. Brethren, the wages of sin, it is said, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Why then are you afraid of death? All those who surrender completely to the Father shall have eternal life. The story of King Hezekiah is well known. The king of Assyria wrote to King Hezekiah, promising to invade his kingdom and to destroy everything, including him. He told Hezekiah in the letter not to deceive himself by thinking that his God would save him from the impending doom. But King Hezekiah, after reading the letter, quietly took it to the altar where he placed it before God for his information and the necessary action. It is not as if Hezekiah had no soldiers or weapons to plan for an offensive. God immediately promised Hezekiah protection and God sent Isaiah to inform him Hezekiah. God then sent an angel to the Assyrian king 
and the angel destroyed his troops. The Assyrian king consulted his juju and it would not work. Consequently, he ran away to Nineveh to his children. While there, he attempted to consult his charms and made sacrifice to them. While there, his children beheaded him. Can you realize the work which fate is capable of doing? It is nonsensical to spend time thinking about your health, about your life and so on. Is your life in your hands? Is it not the Father who controls everything? Brethren, a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. He who has ears to ears, let him hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.